Uh, our library currently has only coin-operated photocopy machines, which cost 10 cents per copy. Okay. So then 10 cents per copy. Now, library administrators are planning to refit most of these machines with card readers. So uh, currently we have coin-operated. Now they are going to be refit with card readers. Okay. The library will sell prepaid copy cards that allow users to make 50 copies at 9 cents per copy. So then now, you know, with, with the new machines with the card readers, okay, the machines are the same, but these machines will be refit with the card readers. The cost will be 9 cent per copy, but you can make 50 copies in it. It will be a prepaid card. So essentially, how much are you paying for this? At this price, you'll be paying $4.5. Make sense? Yeah, 450 cents. So basically, you're paying $4.5 for a prepaid card. You can make 50 copies from that card. And, you know, so essentially the cost per copy is 9 cents, right? So here, if you have to make 50 copies, then how much will you pay? You will pay 500 cents. So that is $1.5, right? So uh, now with the card readers, you can actually make 50 copies for a cheaper price for uh, 4.5 copies. Now the library will sell prepaid copy cards that, allow, yeah. Now, administrators believe that despite the convenience of copy cards and their lower cop per copy cost, makes sense. It is convenient. You don't have to put in a coin every time, of course. And the cost per copy is also lower. It's only nine cents. The number of copies made in the library will be essentially unchanged after the refit. So they are assuming here that the number of copies made are going to be the same only because it, you know, perhaps it just depends on the need of the um, learners, for example, right? So it's it's not about whether it is cheaper or expensive. It's just that, let's say, the need of the learners is, let's say, 50 copies. So then... Uh, over here, they would have paid $1.5 for this. Over here, the for 50 copies, they would pay $4.5. And it is cheaper, but the number of copies are going to stay the same. All right. Now, on the assumption that administrator's assessment is correct. Now, which assessment are we talking about? This one. Administrators believe that despite the convenience, blah, 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 will be essentially unchanged after the refit. So we're saying the number of copies made will be the same in, in both the cases. So for example, if total 500 copies were made over here, then total 500 copies would be made over here as well in the after the refit also. Um, then which of the following predictions about the effect of the refit is most strongly supported by the information given, okay? Which of the following predictions about the effect of the refit is most strongly supported by the information given, right? So this information should support one of these, right? Uh, you know, which of the following predictions about the effect is most strongly supported. So essentially, they're saying that uh, I need an inference, something which is most likely going to be true. So we're going to look at a must be true, an inference kind of a question. Yeah, even though it says most strongly supported, but essentially it means that we're looking for an inference question over here. This is going to give us something out of this. Yeah, one of these. Okay, most likely to be true. Yeah. Okay, let's look at these options now. Based on whatever is given and based on that the number of copies are going to be uh, same in both the cases, we have to say that which one of these is going to be true. Okay, Library patrons will only purchase a copy card on days when they need to make 50 or more copies. Is Does this need to be true based on what is given over here? No, right? We're not given that the card will expire or something. Um, they, I mean, we don't know on which days they are going to buy the card or let's say if they perhaps want to, you know, make 46 copies, then making 46 copies, that, then it also it is cheaper, right? So then we cannot say this. There is no need for us to infer this. Yeah, this may not be true, right? So then, of course, not the answer. Look at B. No library patrons will increase their usage of the library's photocopy machines once the refit has been made. Okay, now, is it essential? Look, again, you know, this is about generalization and individual cases. So something that we can say about the entire group average, we not, it's not necessary that it has to be applicable to everyone, right? So if I say that the average group of the boys in, um, in what average age of the boys in this class, for example, is let's say 12 years, does it mean that every boy is 12 years? No, right? We know that some can be, um, you know, younger, some can be older. So similarly over here, we are given that the total number of copies that are going to be made, they are going 
be the same. But does that mean that every person has to make the same number of copies? It's not necessary, right? Uh, if, you know, after the change, if I feel like this is super convenient, maybe I should increase the number of copies that I get made from here. It is possible that I, as an individual, do make more number of copies from there, right? But essentially, he's saying that it will not change. That means likely that someone else will make fewer. Doesn't matter. So overall, they are saying that the impact will be the same. The number of copies will be about 500 only. Even if, let's say, you know, but it is possible that one or two people start making more or fewer copies. That's certainly possible. It's not necessary that no person can increase their usage of the library's photocopy machines, right? So this is also not the answer. Okay, look at C. If most of the copy cards sold in the library are used to their full capacity, so if most of the cards are used to their full capacity, that means all 50 copies are made, the number of people using the library's photocopy machines over a given period will fall. Is there any logic to this? One, the number of people using the library, that is not a point that we are discussing at all, right? The moment you read this, that the number of people will fall, you should just ignore it because we have absolutely no information about the number of people. If we are given something, it's only about the total number of copies that they need to be unchanged. But then it is possible that there are fewer people coming in and they're making more copies. Isn't it? They are, you know, the administrators are essentially bringing in all the various aspects and then saying that, okay, the total impact of all of these is going to be that it will remain unchanged. That does not mean that, um, you know, the number of people cannot increase or cannot decrease, right? So the number of people is absolutely irrelevant. We only have data about the number of copies that will be made, the total number of copies. That so this is also wrong. Okay. Go to D. Revenues from photocopying will decrease. They're saying revenues from photocopies will decrease unless. Okay, do you remember how we handle unless? We have discussed it in the module. We have discussed it in a webinar before as well. Do remember how we handle unless A, B. Yeah, because sometimes it can get a little confusing. So unless A, B just means that A is necessary. And that is how I think about it now. Because in GMAT question, it's not really that simple. Our sentences are not very simple. Our conditions are not very simple. So then it can lead to confusion. So I would say A is necessary for not B. Remember this, yeah? That is how we deal with unless A, B. So uh, unless most library, revenues from photocopying will decrease unless most library patrons choose to use the remaining coin operated machines in preference to the card reader equipment. So they're saying that most people using the old machines, right? Using the old machines, because it's talking about uh, choose to use the remaining coin operated machines, the old machines in preference to the card reader equipment. So they're saying most people should use old machines this is necessary, is necessary, right? Most people using old machines, this is preferring the old machines, whatever, is necessary for what? For revenues from photocopying will decrease. So if this, most people use old machines, then it is, this is necessary for revenues not decreasing. <clears throat> okay, does that make sense? It's saying, now we have converted this into our um, necessary statement. What is a necessary statement? It says that most people need to use old machines, need to prefer the coin-operated machines. For what? For the revenue to not decrease. For revenue from photocopying will decrease, right? This negated becomes the revenue will not decrease. So this is necessary for revenue to not decrease. Most people should use the old machines. Look, it kind of sounds okay, right? It, it kind of sounds like it makes sense, doesn't it? Because if most people use the new machines and, you know, they have that fancy card, which is cheaper also, then it kind of makes sense of the revenue. And, you know, we have been given that total number of copies will be the same. Then it kind of feels that, you know, it, it makes sense. Mm. It is possible that, um, you know, revenues will not decrease. Okay, I don't want to think, I haven't thought about, you know, every eventuality, what can happen, but to me, it kind of makes sense, right? So I'll just hold on to it and I'll take a look at the last option also. Okay, revenues from photocopying will increase 
Okay, revenues will increase if copy cards that are purchased are on average used to significantly less than 90% of their capacity. Well, look, capacity of the copy cards is 50 copies, right? 90% of their capacity is like 45 copies. So they're saying that if the uh, cards are used to less than 45, that means let's say if I use uh, the copy cards to 50% of their capacity, let's say out of the 50 copies that I can make, if I use the card only for 25 copies, they're saying if this is what happens, that for the cards that I purchase, out of every 50 copies that I can make, I use the card to make only 25 copies, then the revenues from photocopying will increase. And that makes sense, right? Look, if out of the 50 copies, instead of the 50 copies, I use it to make only 45 copies, I have paid... <clears throat> 450 cents for it and I'm making only 45 copies which is 90% of the card how much am I paying I'm paying 10 cents per copy so I'm paying exactly was what I was paying in the original yeah with the old um the coin operated machines right I'm paying exactly the same so my revenue will be exactly the same because total number of copies is the same right but what happens if I make even fewer if I don't even use the card up to 50 uh, 45 Let's say if I use it only to 25, then for every 25 copies that I'm making, I am paying $4.5, which means that for every 50 copies that I'm making, I'm paying $9, right? So then for these 500 copies, for every 50 copies, I was making $5. But now for these 50 copies, I'm making $9 because I'm using this card only for 25 copies. So then my revenue will increase. Does that make sense? Now, you know, you might wonder, okay, I mean, how is it, like, does it make sense? What are you talking about that someone will buy a card from which you can make 50 copies, but you would only make 25 copies? Look, for example, think about it, that, you know, people buy cards. It's a prepaid card, so they've already paid for it. Yeah, given it's a prepaid card, right? Now, uh, my card gets lost, for example, or I have the card, but I left it at home. Or, for example... I just forgot about it. Or for example, my need is such that, okay, I bought the card, but then I didn't really need to make any copies. So I ended up using it only to a certain extent. And that is not something which is unheard of. It does happen a lot. We're, I mean, you know, we, we prepay it, but then we are unable to use it completely, entirely, right? So, so that is why it is not something which is uh, irrational. It, and this makes complete sense. If you use it to less than 90% of its capacity, then for sure, you, you know, making less than 45 copies, if you're making less than 45 copies, you've already paid $4.5. That means you're paying more than 10 cents per copy. So the revenue, total revenue is going to increase because your cost per copy has increased and you're making the same number of copies, but cost per copy is increased. So your revenue is certainly going to increase. So this is definitely correct, right? Now, here, then that means that this is not correct. And why is this not correct? Because when I was discussing, I was thinking about D, I was not thinking about the case in which the card is not used completely, right? But then when I read E, then that case also came into my mind that, hey, it is possible that the card is not used completely, right? So then is it necessary that everyone should use the old machines only so that the revenue doesn't decrease? It's not, right? Because I don't know how much the card is going to be uh, uh, used, right? So now, so that is why, now I know why my D is incorrect. Now I know that my answer is going to be E, right? So that uh, one factor, and that is the reason why we say that you have to read each and every option in a critical reasoning question, because you might feel that, okay, this is the correct answer. But when you look at another option, you know, some other factor might come to your mind. Hey, this is also possible, which I had not thought of before. And then you know that, okay, the previous uh, option was incorrect. And, you know, this is the correct one. Make sense? Hmm. Right? Because we don't know how much a card will be used. We can say nothing about the revenue until, and unless we know how much the card will be used. Does it make sense? Any questions over here?
uh, is most not a, um, not really. Look, um, you know, do understand that what we are given over here is is most strongly supported by, right? And we have seen questions where. Uh, you know, the inference, you know, whatever we call the inference question that the premises should support one of these or, you know, which of the following hypothesis is best supported by the argument, for example, something like that. Uh, when we have this most strongly supported or best supported, sometimes it doesn't really need to be must be true. If it is most likely to be true, even those questions do come under inference questions. But, you know, when we are given most strongly supported or best supported like that. Right. If it is given, which of the following can we infer from the argument? Of course, then you have to look for the must be true only. But when the wording is such, then I mean, if it is most likely to be true, then it it works. So that is why when I have most, I mean, it it you know I I wouldn't really worry too much about it. I'll I'll keep it in mind for sure. Yeah. 